welcome to a, another ASMR gaming episode. In this one, we will be playing a game called Card Hunter. Now, Card Hunter is a uh, small little tabletop-esque. It like tries to emulate like a Dungeons and Dragons sort of tabletop RPG, and it does so in a very interesting way by utilizing cards and not really all well, kind of deck building and some RPG elements, not a lot, but it's a really fun little game. And I decided to share it with you guys today. I find it a very relaxing game myself. So I just want to hop right in and uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy it as well. Before I get into it, I just want to wish you guys uh, a good day or a good night, you know, whenever or wherever it may be for you. I hope it's going well. Um, and if you like the video, uh, please consider subscribing to the channel or liking the video as well. With that out of the way, allow me to create an account. All right, from this point forward, uh, I'll be trying out a different setup for my audio. I've decided to move to a mic stand as opposed to having the microphone directly on top of my desk. And I'm already noticing some uh, downsides, namely that I have a microphone directly in front of my face right now. That's uh, not ideal, but I will soldier on. So let's create a new account. There we go. We'll call it Copeland. There we go. Copeland relaxation. Let's see how this goes. Ah, uh, yes. Perfect. Yield E U L A. Let's see here. Um, nothing important. I don't really care. Are those N and N's? I love those. Welcome, Copeland Relaxation. Playing Card Hunter together is going to be awesome. Uh, I gotta try and do some nerd voices. I gotta try it out, but I don't think I'll be able to. Let's do Queen Fang's challenge. My older brother Melvin has been telling me how great it is. All right, let's see here. Oh, he sounds exactly like I thought he would. Your party has survived the undying marshes, following the ancient map to the gold leaf blade. And the pamphlet says, Card Hunter, uh, looks like trademarked, official adventure module, Green Fang's challenge. Deep in the undying marshes are hidden three priceless artifacts. A sword of peerless sharpness, a mace blessed by Saint Tempron herself, and a staff infused with demon fire. But brave indeed would be the adventurers who would invade the brooding fens to face the enemy. Sorry, like I said, I got a microphone directly in my face here. The enmity of the lizard men, for it, it is rumored that they are protected by the Viridian dragon, Green Fang himself. For levels 18 to 22, two exciting battles, Card Hunter trademarked. And this is the tutorial mission. I played through the tutorial very briefly uh, just to make sure there was one so I wouldn't have to try and explain everything as we go along because I do not know everything about this game. I played it when I was a very little kid. Why is there water on my cigarettes? I will not be smoking in this video for those of you who are concerned about my health. Now approaching the blood-soaked altar of a lizard man shrine, they brace for a final assault. And 
here we go, we're about to be tossed in.
Okay, so I've got some heels in my back pocket, and I might be able to, um, have the elf wizard draw a movement card, so I can teleport somebody. Um, I don't know, man. What's this guy's health at? Six. So if I hit him, um, for four, he's gonna die the next turn. So I think I'll do that, right? Oh shit. So he's dead the next turn. I, I can um, wait to target. I, I can just ignore him because he's got that burn damage on there. Blocks in your hand defend you automatically if you roll high enough. And that's what that green card does uh, that I pointed out earlier. Uh, shield block. Armor may lessen the blow, but only a shield stops it from landing. Scar and Elkenford. And looks like I nailed that. With a 2 plus, I hit a 5, so I block the attack. Unfortunately, I do have to heal my elf now. And that might not even be enough. So I'm gonna set 5 health. So I'm gonna run my dwarf in. And. See if I can just, I can probably just kill the two of these guys right here, right now, right? Yeah. Ten damage and they're gone. And I can kind of ignore Skeleton over here. He's not really relevant at the moment. Um, simply because he's going to burn to death on the next round anyway. So it's not really pertinent what I do. So I think I can just do a reaching swing, and then teleport that guy away from my elf. Um... I'm gonna just put my healer in between the elf and everybody else. And then teleport... I think... This guy... Over here. Alright, looks like that's everything. Oh no, I can just kill him now. And now I'm completely out of cards, as is Gary. And we can end the round. I'm a little bit worried about my elf healer, or elf wizard, or witch, or whatever you want to call him. Goodbye, Mr. Bones. Swarming attack. Melee piercing, so if you have armor, it can go through that to a degree. When this card does damage, increase its damage by one for every ally within two squares, so it's going to be doing six damage. That's a problem. But I can uh, probably just kill these guys, to be honest with you. I'm not really too worried about it. Um, if I just zap this other lizard man. And he just walks right in. What an idiot. Time to beat the hell out of him. Strong bash. Side back one. No, slide back one. I never noticed how dirty the floor was until I was sliding along it on my face. Looks like I won. So Zhu Ten return to dust and the treasure is yours. Yay. Open the chest to claim your treasure. Oh damn. I got a gold sword. What's that called? The gold leaf blade, level 13 legendary weapon. Looks like it's got um can I check the yeah here we go. So it's got obliterating chop. Choose up to two different targets for this attack. 10 damage. Range of 1. Perforating strike. Penetrating. Kingdoms have fallen. And wars both born and buried. At the point of a simple knife. And strong hack. They call me a hack. So I return the favor. The stentor Callahan. And then parry. Block melee, draw a card, as long as you roll 2 plus. Don't look at your opponent's sword. Watch his eyes. So I, that replaces my um, 
Thornhill sword, apparently. Replaces all three. Does it? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what it's doing. What's this do? Skillful strike. Hard to block three. Okay. If you look closely, you will see I have carved my bill into your chest right after my initials. Talissa the Skinflint. Uh, what the hell are these? Impaler. Add one damage to any penetrating melee attack. While run. Interesting. Oh no. As you lift your prize in celebration, a terrible rumbling shakes the temple. The stones themselves seem to cry out in terror as a caustic reek fills the air. Green Fang is here. Oh boy. So it looks like we're fighting a big old dragon who uh, kind of broke through the wall over here. Very interesting. Beware Green Fang's acidic breath and use your new cards to avoid his armor cards. All right, we'll see if I uh, draw them because there is a random element to the game. So it's got fly. Dragon's wings do not always appear to be able to support their weight. Don't be fooled. I mean, okay. So I gotta like, kinda run in and kill this guy, I think. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Good old, uh, Borgo is gonna... <laughs> Borgo is gonna run in like a dumbass. I've worn this male hallmark more than, in more battles than I can count and never has it failed me. So I reduced the damage by two. So that's not bad. Each square can only have, so that's a terrain attachment you put down on the ground and I can, um, I can use cleansing burst to get rid of it with my cleric. Um, I think I'm gonna move up with the cleric. Again, I gotta, I gotta like move in. God damn, bro. Homeboy's taking a pounding. I'm gonna have to dump this uh, cleansing burst down, get rid of those acid tiles, it's starting to become a problem. Discard terrain attachments in the target square. Heal two, burst one, unblockable. The monks of Jolif's impossibly spotless temples hint at their true power. Uh, apparently they, uh, their true power is to clean. I'm gonna clear out this large area. Uh, the dragon then flies, okay. Greater heal, heal eight. Seals wounds, heals burns, cleans rusty armor, and makes problem hair a thing of the past. Okay, cool. So, I've gotta get in position with my wizard, or witch, however you wanna phrase it. So I think I'm gonna run over here, and uh, Oh, I have to heal my dwarf now. He's taking an absolute beating. So I'm gonna try and zap the dragon with penetrating bolt. Penetrating. Wearing a metal armor when facing a wizard may be more than a simple fashion blunder. A zap for three damage. I will try out my powerful spark. Always use your superior intellect to your advantage. Or if that fails, electrocution is also good. Help and half staff. Oh, god damn. This armor grants immunity to fire, poison, electricity, and acid. And he keeps that. That's truly bothersome. Push three teleport so I can move this dragon away from my, um, can I rotate the camera somehow? Um, give me a second, I gotta figure this out. Lighting, auto target, chat. Um, help, help me. God damn it, dude. How to play, I, uh, uh, Order of play, no, 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 what, give me the controls, motherfucker. <laughs> okay, um, 
me about the terrain. I want to rotate the camera. Fucking hey, I can't. Well, so I'm gonna just. I think I'll try and inspire my dwarf and see what he draws. Attack skill. Draw a card. Discard that card unless it is an attack card. Repeat until you have drawn two attack cards or drawn six cards. The best offense is a good offense. I think I'll wait. No, 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 no. I'll do it right now and if I get good cards I'll just move the dragon back toward my dwarf. Well, that worked out really well. Strong hack and perforating strike. Possibly 13 damage. So, Buddy's gonna go right here. And he's about to get smacked up. They call me a, a hack, so I return the favor. Oh. Still, it's only one armor, so. It's not that bad. Looks like uh, I'll be able to kill the guy the next turn. He's only got 10 health left. How many fucking cards does he draw? Holy shit. Uh, luckily for me, I can uh, give him a good 4 damage, I think. You know what? Boiling armor. Target character discards all armor cards. You think it's hot in here now? Let me show you something about hot. Alcon, the Pyromanius. Okay, so that's... Oh, God damn it! I'm gonna have to chop the guy and run. Oh, fuck. But it's... Yeah, I'm gonna hobble away, I think. Um, I should probably kill the dragon before he kills my dwarf. So I can run in and beat the shit out of the beat the shit out of him. And there we go. I won, man. I'm the best. I'm a with a terrible roar, green fang crashes onto the temple floor. The Viridian dragon's long reign of terror is ended. Whoa, that was great. Yeah, it sure was, buddy. Oh, God. Gary, what are you doing? You kids can't play Green Fang's challenge with my party. Um. If you want to play with my card on your set, you have to start at level one. Oh. Yes, Melvin. Sorry, Melvin. Fucking Melvin the Marvelous over there. Onward. So I think I'll uh, keep this video kind of trim. I'll do a little beginner dungeon after this, and uh, I think I'll chop up the video after that. Sorry about that. Copeland, re <laughs> Copeland relaxation. My brother says we have to start again with some new characters. That's fine. Let's see. Our tale begins in Card Hunteria, in the musty, dusty Orc's Head Tavern. Alright, uh, a level 1 tavern. Let's go in. An old man staggers through the door, blood streaming from his side. Help! Monsters are attacking the village. Who will save us? Uh, click a tab to choose a dwarven human or elven warrior, then recruit one. You know, I'll be honest with you, um, I really kind of just want to get, like, all dwarves or something, like, uh, the Augs cast did way back when. I'll read them out, though. Dwarven warriors are stout and fierce, capable of hanging in a fight for a long time. However, they more, they move more slowly than any other race. At high levels, they get access to cards that improve their durability. Okay. Uh, human warrior. Oh, look at that. How come I only get one dwarf warrior? Man, that's bogus. Human warriors balance speed and toughness. They can get into a 
fight and sustain it. At higher levels, they get access to cards that let them plan ahead and strategize. Um, I'm good. Elven warriors are the most mobile of all warriors, but not as tough as other races. At high levels, they get access to cards that give them even more movement options than dwarf. Uh, Ulkruf, Varstrat, Undazor, Gladmars. I don't know what to name him. What's a good dwarven name? Joe Pesci. How do I spell Pesci? Give me a second. S-C-I. There we go. We've got good old Joe Pesci. Joe Pesci hears the call to adventure, strides over from the bar, and pledges to help the old man. It's time for your first adventure. Click exit to return the map. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why is it only just one? Don't want to get more? I, uh, I guess not. What does this button do? Okay, nice. Pizza slices. Oh, what does that do? Get out of the way, you fuck. Come on. Oh, no. This game turned into a fucking mobile game. <sighs> oh no. Two different types of currency that you have to buy for real money. Yeah, I'm good, man. That's the exact reason I stopped playing World of Tanks. That and, uh, artillery. It made it to tier 8 and everything, too. I was doing pretty good in the uh, T-34. And I uh, just lost motivation after the Christmas thing. I burnt myself out, you know. With his last breath, the old man gasps and points towards the nearby village of Omelette. Alright, let's go, boys. These raiders should be pretty easy for someone who's already defeated Green Fang. Well, I mean, the party that defeated Green Fang was already completely geared up. Card Hunter Official Adventure Module OM1 Raid on Omelet Kobolds are raiding the peaceful village of Omelet, slaughtering the villagers and plundering their meager possessions. Will a brave adventurer step up to send these vicious bandits packing? The peasants will surely reward anyone valiant enough to aid them stopping the raid on Omelet. An exciting battle for one character. Okay. Uh, I think I'll do that. I guess starting properly will at least give me a chance to explain a few more of the rules for you. Chapter 1, The Streets of Omelet. The village of Omelet's peaceful existence is torn asunder by the din of battle. A kobold raiding party has descended from the hills and set about ruthlessly sacking the small community. Drawing your sword, you rush to repel the invaders. Alright, let's go. Let's fuck them up, boys. Oh, we, these kobold raiders are in a group that shares a single deck. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Some minor mobs are like that. I kind of forgot about it, but... Okay, let's, uh... Kind of trundle in there. When a group plays a move card, they can all move at once. Alright, looks like this guy got close enough to me where I can beat the shit out of him. Simple strike. Melee crushing. Sometimes, it's the simple things that are the most painful. There we go. A weak strike. Test your enemy's defenses before you commit your main attack. It is the same whether in a duel or a war. Stand your Kalaman. Monsters in a group turn gray after they have attacked and can't act again until the next round. Well, I think I'll just kill him then. Bludgeon. It's not 
just your hopes and dreams those ogres are going to crush. Well, okay. Looks like I can't do anything to this guy.
enemies have to hold when they move next to you. So move to that yellow square to stop them surrounding you. Because it'll lock down control of those two um, squares there. That's what he's saying. So now they can only go here. These shield-carrying kobolds have block cards. Use your weakest attacks first to draw them out. Alright, um... Whack that one. And he blocked it. Block any with damage of four less. There is a limit to how much force can be absorbed by wood and steel before bone and meat feel the effects. But he blocked it anyway. So that's a weak strike. Uh, let me try a simple strike here. Okay, looks like he doesn't have any more block cards, so I can just, you know, kill him. There we go. And we're both out of cards, so time to end the turn. When you see new cards, remember to right-click on them and see what special abilities they have. Uh, yeah, like Chop. I know what Chop does already. Can I pass and then... Yep, perfect. So you see, now they're both in position where I can Chop them both um, and kill one of them with a simple strike. There we go. And now I can strike down one of them. Doesn't really matter which one. Now I can end my round. I wonder how they calculate initiative. But, uh, it's over for him. It's all over for that kobold. Um, having dispatched the raiding party, you overturn their camp and liberate what items they had. Searching the area reveals a cave mouth and a crude earthen tunnel leading into the darkness under the hills. Is this where the kobolds have come from? Only further adventures will tell. I get the distinct impression that yes, this is indeed where the kobolds have come from. Oh nice. Huzzah! So Joe Pesci leveled up and has more health. Okay. Joe Pesci also unlocked a new shield slot. Shields give you blocks and other defensive cards. Um, nice. So I assume I'm about to receive a shield in this chest here, right? Oh, whoa, a rare item. The Kobold Killer. That should come in handy. Uh, nice, man. Gold streak nuggets, more pickled herring, and the kobold killer. So it looks like, yeah, looks like I'm gonna replace that blunt sword with something substantially better. And what's this? Controlled overswing. Discard your oldest card when you play this. Alright. So I'll wrap that up there. Yo, no, you should really head to the armory to get yourself a shield. I hear there are new heroes waiting at the tavern too. Uh, thanks, buddy. Um. What, uh, what does this mean? Crafting. Enough cards to craft the item. Uh, yeah, dude. Uh -oh. You can't sell usable items now, only treasure. Later in the campaign, you'll be able to sell usable items. Yeah, okay. Looks like we've got a common shield here. With two flimsy blocks and a weak block. Block any with damage, two or less. Blocking isn't all in the timing, although with arms like that, it might be time to run. A little bit insulting. 
There we are. I hear that. No, okay, I, I get it, dude. Tavern. Oh, shit. Wizards. Recruit one of these crafty wizards for your party. Human wizard. Human wizards manipulate and damage from afar. They have a good balance of mobility and toughness, and at higher levels get access to the human tactical planning skills. Elf wizard. Elven wizards. Oh, that's badass. I want that one. Elven wizards are renowned for their ability to annoy by casting spells from afar. Their natural mobility lets them dance out of danger more often than not. At higher levels, their elven skills accentuate this mobility even further. Uh, I like that. That's kind of how I want my wizard to be, like a hit-and-run artist. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That's hilarious. Dwarven wizards usually come out best in a ranged fight due to their high health. However, they may have trouble staying out of melee range due to their slow movement. At higher levels, they can resist magic and shrug off a damage. I'm going with the elf wizard, man. Uh, that's badass, for one thing. And as funny as that little dwarf wizard is, man, um, that's a cool sprite. Um, so I gotta name the elf. Yo, I don't know. I don't know what to call this guy. I don't know what to fucking call him. Um, Nice. Armor 1. Supple and strong. Hide armor. Make 
may not stop every blow, but is always but it always takes some of the sting out. Nice. This kobold hero has a lot of blocks. It can't block you if you attack from behind though. Well you just gave me an idea then. These squares are in front of the that dude yeah 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 yep, yep yep thank you thank you. I understand the concept of being behind something. So I think I'm gonna zap this shit out of him. Zap. Elements are the concern of mortals. Pure energy is the instrument of the divine. Nyane of Burn Tree Vale. Oh, well, he's about to get absolutely smoked. I think. I can't. I can't reach him. So I'll have to go here. Looks like he's just beating up on my dwarf for right now. Unfortunately for him. He's about to get a nasty surprise. And an even worse one from the... Uh, the dwarf, as you can see, whenever you attack an enemy, they turn to whoever attacks him. How come another little zap here? Well, it's better than no zap. He's about to get another one right there. Weak drop. About a bang. Unfortunately, it looks like he survives. I don't have time to explain to you what conductive means, but worry not. You will find out for yourself in a moment. That's one hell of a sound effect right there. And I don't have any more cards left, and it doesn't look like the kobold can attack anymore, so... I'll have to pass. He's still trying to kill my dwarf, so I'm just gonna blast him. There we go. Oh, that was alright, I guess. I doubt you'll get much further, though. This game isn't dumbed down for the masses. Uh, whatever this... I forget his name, this guy, Melvin, or whatever the fuck. The guy seems like a kind of, um... He's one hell of a stereotype there. The tunnel finally emerges high above the floor of White Skull Canyon. So this is where the kobold lair is. You will return with allies to finally stamp out these monsters and liberate the treasure they have stolen from the surrounding villages. Collect loot. Yes, give me loot. Oh nice, look at this. Holy shit, I get some sick loot. Bulky club, uh, Orzo's excellent wand, with a big zap, look at that, look at that big zap. In truth, more mayhem is wrought by the sound and bright flash of this technique than its power, yet its effectiveness cannot be disputed. And we got a goblin cleaver as well. Uh, piercing, or uh, two penetrating cuts, or three penetrating cuts and two stabs. That's wound number nine. Let's see how long I can keep you alive. And for the penetrating cut, every suit of armor has a weak point. I just spotted yours. And then the able bludgeon. If you're going to carry a big stick, you may as well swing it really, really hard. Okay, um, I think my dwarf is gonna get that. Um, it's a lot of single tar target. And admittedly, I think I'll replace the axe, um, bulky club, a whole bunch of bludgeons, and a strike. I mean, I could go with two clubs, maybe. But I might need the uh, extra range that's more versatile. You know, so I'll hang on to it. And this is a no-brainer, that's just an arcane item. That's a flat boost to my wizard's prowess. I'll finish up looting here. Don't forget to check the armory for new stuff before you wrap up this module. Alright. Oh god damn. New stuff indeed. 
you're searching for a particular type of item, just click that slot on your character sheet. That's a lot better than, um, I can't, I can't do that. Maybe a shield. Shipped shield. That's worse than what I have. A dueler's buckler. A parry. Block melee, block any. These are all just five gold. I've got 44 gold, that's pretty good. Let's see what sort of um, wands I can buy. A lot of sparks, a lot of range. Um, I think that might be a good buy, actually. A bunch of sparks, it's kind of low damage, but... I think the range makes up for it. Long spark, force bolt, penetrating zap, slide back. Let me see what boots I can buy. I do need some better mobility. Disintegrating boots. Dash, some armor. A walk, a strike, and some armor. Cautious sneak. Um, I do want to upgrade Joe Pesci's mobility somehow. Nimble chain boots. Shuffles just like an awful. Hidebound boots. I think I'll replace that there. Just for a little bit extra mobility and still retain the block. And anything that's like actually mobile. Run, walk, walk. Yeah, I think that's gonna be more apt for my uh, wizard. And I'll see if I can afford a wand now. I've got 34 gold. I can get a pretty deep. Oh my god, this one's badass. A lavender staff. Bungled bolt. Oh. I don't know about that one then. I think I'll buy the sparking staff for the versatility. And then maybe I'll buy Joe Pesci a new shield. Ouch. That's a little bit silly. Interesting. Lindsay Block, a parry. Compare that with this here. I do like that. I'll try it out. I can always switch back if I don't like it. Let's, let's get out of here. And see if I can get... Oh. Um, Let's go back to the canyon. Pick an adventure. The White Skull Gates. Returning to White Skull Canyon, you follow the winding, dry riverbed until you come to a high wooden wall. Suddenly, the gates are thrown open. Kobold warriors rush forward, egged on by their high priest, Ig Kabig. How terrifying. Like at all, um, he's gonna die. 
because I'm going to hit him for four at the moment with two sparks. I know he's on two health, so if he moves forward to me at all, I'll just hit him with a um, short spark. But I should be able to uh, hit one of these kobold warriors pretty easily, I think. I'm going to slam... I'm gonna hit this guy, and see if they've got block cards. Oh, I think he does. Okay. And he moved away, smart guy. But, uh, unfortunately for these kobolds, I'm just gonna kill him. With a weak strike, a simple bash, I think I'll spread the damage around, and then zap the, um, other kobold. Big, he's really got the range for that, damn. Blast, when a zap won't reach, just stretch out the energy. Interesting. Well, the electricity is formed here, and I just need something nearby to complete the circuit. Something like you. Goodbye. And we're out of cards, so end the round. It's a very simple little game, but it's very addictive. So there he is, healing for three. Um, I kinda have to get my dwarf in range of Igabig somehow. I'm not too sure how that's gonna work out. He's already back up to five health. Um, yeah, I'm gonna kill the kobold first. And then surround Igabig. I can't get, like, up to him. But I can try and lock him in. So if he tries to yeah, run, there we go. Now I can stab at him. And he runs closer to me somehow. And that was just a stupid maneuver. I guess Gary wanted to get that over with. Victorious, you searched the bodies. Oh, I didn't even, I didn't even read the White Skull Canyon module, I'm so sorry. After battling under the ground itself, you have emerged into the desolate White Skull Canyon. It is here that the kobolds have gathered under the leadership of their sinister high priest. Put them to the sword and end their death. What? Predations for once and for all. Victorious, you search the bodies. While your back is turned, Igabig's feign death enchantment dissipates, and the shifty little kobold priest slips away deeper into the lair after him. So I guess it kind of explains why he just like ran up to me. Oh yes, yes, loot. Give me loot. Big loot. Oh, nice, thin-soled boots. That's, um, I mean, potentially worse than what I have, but it's three movement cards, I guess. Perforating a wand. Um, <sighs> I do need more movement, so I will be taking those. Let's see what Starbuck has here. Telekinesis, little zap, and a big zap. I think I'm gonna just hang on to that, because telekinesis is, um, I think that'd be fairly useful in some situations where I need to bring uh, an enemy to me to kill him, and he seems to want to run away. Chapter 2 the shaman's hut. Pursuing the kobold priest, you corner him in his stinking hut. Now it is time for the final showdown with these murderous bandits. Yeah, there we go. There's, um, a big right there. This map has difficult terrain in it. You must stop moving when you enter difficult terrain. So these guys got a few turns to free themselves. 
difficult terrain doesn't block line of sight like blocked terrain does. You'll have an easier time if you kill the shaman before his minions can get past the difficult terrain. I would imagine so. So I think my poor little dwarf is going to have to just charge in headlong. Because these guys are going to have to burn all their movement to get out of there. I'll run right up to the guy. Excuse me. Uh, Frenzy 2, Duration 2. Troops benefit from many different sorts of encouragement at the Bronze Prince. An unholy frenzy is white and red. It's both an assist and an attack card. Uh, causes one damage to its target, but then it boosts their damage every time they attack. Oh. Well, uh, too late. I'm right up next to him. So I'll just have to, like, uh... Give him some DPS, I guess. And then... This should kill him. This should definitely kill him. I'm gonna run right here. And then... Blow him away. Alright. And now I think I'll move back one, and then allow my dwarf to escape the hut. And... That's the entirety of that round. Alright, so I should be able to slide to. Okay, I like the sound of this. I'm gonna move my dwarf uh, right here. And then good old Joe Pesci. Uh, I'm gonna leave him right there so only one kobold may attack him at a time. And then I'll move my elf to a supporting position right about here. And then zap the fuck out of that kobold. He, he just blocks it. Great. He can't have two block cards, can he? Didn't think so. Alright. Now I just wait for, um, old boy to walk up to me. If you have more than two cards at the end of the round, you have to discard down to two. Okay, I'll, I'll just keep the attack cards because one of them is going to come up to me and I want to just one-shot him. So, I'm going to use my dainty little cut first. Actually, no, no, I'm going to attack this guy and lure out a, um, a block. So he still has that card because it was an unsuccessful block. I should be able to just kill him. There we go. But unfortunately, that block is still in the... Wait, what's it say? Block any with a damage of four or less. So he can't block this. Yeah, he can't block that all. And then I can try out a stab, and hopefully that gets blocked. No, no, I'm gonna use the penetrating cut. Alright. So I can stab him with impunity now. And then move up, and then absolutely smoke this other guy. Ready for this? Goodbye. The coup de gras. That was uh, fairly easy right there. Searching through the muck and bodies, you recover what treasure you can. The kobolds are overthrown and put to flight. The villagers can rest well tonight. You are now a fully fledged adventurer. Nice. Got a little uh, achievement and save omelet. Now I can carry two arcane items. Don't have to make that choice real easy. Unfortunately, good old uh, Joe Pesci can't carry any. Oh, oh, wow. Wow, that shaman had some nice loot. Uh, force, bolt, and zaps. Those move the target, right? Yes. Um, I can just take that. That's all treasure. Blessed Demon Claw. That's a divine item for clerics. Okay. Run weak armor, cloth armor. That's gonna replace all the mobility. I think I just replaced the thin-soled boots with that. 
I think having armor is more important for my dwarf than uh, mobility. Perplexing mirror. Well, penetrating zaps and zaps. I'll hang on to that. That might be useful later on. You've seen how useful priests can be. Head to the tavern and I'll let you recruit one yourself. Alright. Here we go. Human priests are healers and fighters who can fight in close, aid their friends, and curse their enemies. At higher levels, they get access to skill cards that let them manipulate their card draws. Um, that's... That's actually really useful. Um, elven priests are highly mobile support characters who can both heal and curse from a distance. Though they have decent melee weapons, they can't hang in a fight for too long. At higher levels, they gain even more powerful elf movement. Oh, that's pretty radical. I like that. I might just do this just for that character model. That's really sick. Dwarven priests are resilient support characters. With their natural dwarven toughness, they can hang in a fight, but they may have trouble getting into range. At higher levels, their dwarven skills make them even harder to hurt. Uh, I think I'll, I'll get the dwarven cleric. So I get two dwarves. What's another famous short guy I can go with? Um... Oh, that's a woman. Um, Rosie. Oh, Donald. There we go. Yeah. Rosie O'Donnell will fight by your side. Yeah. Perfect. Your party is now full. You can recruit new characters if you like, but you will have to swap them for old ones. Alright, that's uh, fine. Keep on the hinterlands. The Keep on the Hinterlands is your new home. Check it out. Uh, why not? You can check out your collection here. Uh, Celestial Forge in your crowd. Need better. Uh, I look, dude. I that's great. Um, I, this is too much for me right now. I don't. I don't want to. move adjacent to an enemy can trip. Oh, um, okay. Interesting. The Daily Deal, Caverns of Troglodytes, Wizard's Workshop, Highway Robbery, Ruby Demon Portal. Oh, nice. Uh, thank you. Yeah. I don't really care. Uh, so, with that out of the way, I'm gonna, can I save? How do I save? How do I save the game? That's not save the game. How do I save the game? Thank you. How do I save the game?
uh, for the next dungeon that we can go to, either the caverns or the troglodytes or the wizard's workshop. So if uh, any of you guys want to vote in the comments, feel free to, and I'll catch you all in the next video.